Hello learners, here we come with the lesson in case of suspicion. How would you feel if you suspected someone of having done something wrong which he did not and you discover later how wrong you were? Would you apologize to the person? Continue to live with guilt? Or decide not to suspect anyone without evidence? The present story is about a country doctor called Benson who received a call one day in the middle of the night from one of his clients. The client out sorely requested him to attend on his wife who was in labor and was soon going to deliver a baby. The doctor felt it was his duty to attend to his client so started his car to reach the house. It was a dark, windy and cold night. On his way he met a stranger who was walking with some difficulty. The doctor drew his car next to him and offered a lift. The stranger was only too glad to accept this offer. He got into the car. The doctor too was happy as now he would have some company. After settling down, they both introduced themselves. The doctor told him that he was on his way to look up his client. The stranger gave his name as Evans and said he had served in the ambulance unit on the Italian front. He had worked as a truck driver but had been sacked a month ago. Now he was on his way to Detroit to look for a job. Mr. Evans then asked him for a cigarette. The doctor gave him one. The stranger then asked for another one for later use. He pulled out one without waiting for the doctor's reply. After taking out the cigarette, he put the packet back in the doctor's pocket. The doctor was rather surprised and irritated with his behavior. After some time, the doctor wanted to look at the time, so he put his hand in his pocket to pull out his watch. He dug his hand deep into the pocket but could not find it. He concluded that the stranger had taken it when he tried to keep the cigarette box back in his pocket. He thought of a plan. He quietly pulled out his pistol from under his uh, seat and pushed the nose to the rider's side, much to his surprise, and ordered him to keep the watch back in his pocket. The stranger was shocked to see this behavior of the doctor, but quietly obeyed. He pulled out his watch from his vest and put it in the doctor's pocket. The doctor angrily pushed the stranger out of his car and drove out. On reaching Sorle's house, he was informed that Mrs. Sorle had delivered a baby 30 minutes back. Much relieved to hear this, the doctor took out the cigarette and sat down. He narrated the story of the stranger to Mr. Sorle, who quite enjoyed listening to his adventure story. Suddenly, he remembered that he had to record time of delivery. He pulled out his watch to see the time and was left stupefied. What do you think he saw? The suspense would uh, be unraveled in the last part of the story. Read section 8.1 of the story. From the line, he threw back the covers to payment of his baby bills. This part of the story tells us how Dr. Benson, a country doctor, received a call in the middle of the night one day from his client, Ott Sorley, whose wife was in labor. Ott Sorley requested him to come down immediately. It was two o'clock in the middle of the night, quite an odd hour. His mind complained about the horrible hour and wondered why children had to be born at such odd times. But Sorleys were his old clients, so he felt it was his duty to attend to his patient. Sorleys already had a dozen children and never did she have a child in good weather or daylight. They were all born when the weather was horrible and always at night time. He packed his doctor's kit with necessary medicines and items needed for obstetrical cases and set the course for Ott Sorley's house. The night was biting cold and windy, but Dr. Benson wasted no time. He started the car, which started with some difficulty. Now read section 8.2 from It was a long ride to the Sorley to Watch was not there. This section describes Dr. Benson's chance meeting with a stranger on route to Sorley's house. The stranger was walking with some difficulty against the wind. Seeing his plight, Dr. Benson stopped his car and offered him a ride. The stranger was more than pleased to accept the offer. Dr. Benson was also relieved that now he would have some company. After being seated in the car, the man asked Dr. Benson for a cigarette. Then. The doctor gave him one. 
but soon the stranger asked for another one for use later on. The stranger pulled out one more cigarette from the packet without any hesitation and without asking, he put the packet back in the doctor's coat. The doctor was little surprised and annoyed at this impudence of the stranger. Thereafter, the two introduced themselves. The stranger, Evans, told him that he was in the ambulance section during the war and served on the Italian border. After the war, he had worked as a truck driver, but the company had sacked him and now he was without a job for almost a month. He was now on his way to Detroit in search of a job. The doctor also introduced himself. It was then that the doctor noticed fresh scar mark on the stranger's face. But just then he thought of Mrs. Sorley and wanted to check the time. He put his hands in the pocket only to discover that the watch was missing. Imagine learners the shock on his face. Now read section 8.3. In this section we come to know what the doctor did next. Dr. Benson was now sure that the man had taken his watch when he had taken the liberty to put the cigarette box back in his pocket. He thought of outsmarting him. He pulled out his pistol, aimed at his neck and ordered him to keep the watch back in the pocket. The stranger was quite shocked and surprised to see his behavior, but he did not ask or show any resistance. He put his hand in the vest and pulled out a watch and put it in the doctor's coat pocket. Dr. Benson stopped the car and pushed Evans out of the car and without waiting drove off. He told him that he had an emergency and that he was going to save one life. Despite the pressure of time, he had taken out some time to help him. Meanwhile, Sorley had asked one of his sons to stand near the narrow wooden gate with a lantern to show him the way. When the doctor reached Sorley's house, he came to know that Mrs. Sorley had already de delivered a baby without any problems about 30 minutes back. So he did not need to use any of the instruments that he had brought with him. He sat down, pulled a cigarette and started to smoke. But this became the turning point of the story. Now learners, read section 8.4. From a fellow I picked up two nurses Nesbitt, Jones and Winget. How would you feel when you discovered that your suspicion was baseless? Much relieved that his patient had a safe delivery, the doctor sat down with Sorley and narrated the episode of robbery to him. Ott was amused to hear the doctor's adventure with a stranger, but was happy that the doctor had got his watch back. If he hadn't got his watch back, there was no way he could have recorded the time of the child's birth. The doctor pulled out his watch and moved to a side table to see the time under the light of the lamp. Can you guess what surprise could be in store for the doctor? When he held the watch in his hand, he noticed that the crystal was cracked and the top was broken. He was surprised. On closer inspection, he saw an inscription which read to Private T. Evans, Ambulance Section, whose personal bravery preserved our lives the night of November 3rd, 1943, near the Italian front. Nurses Nesbitt, Jones and Winget. Let us now review the story and try to answer some questions. How do you think the doctor felt on seeing the watch? What do you think he must have told Sorley now? What he would do now? What do you think Evans gave watch without putting up any resistance? Do you think the fresh scar had anything to do with the watch? What had happened to the doctor's own watch? Would you blame the doctor for what he did? Do you think Providence sent the stranger to save the doctor from embarrassment? How did the watch come to the rescue of the doctor? Learners, what message does the story give us? Number one, do not suspect anyone without sufficient evidence. Number two, do not judge a person by his looks. Learners, I hope by now you have become better equipped to handle your test. Do not become overconfident. Best of luck. Thank you.